Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. Welcome to my next screencast where you will learn how to create image slideshow using Greensock. We'll use the Timeline, Light and Twinline plugins to create a nice elegant image slideshow from start to finish. Okay, in the first part, it's a three-part series, so it's a little bit longer, it's not your average YouTube tutorial. In the first part, we'll learn how to create the HTML and CSS for a full screen slideshow layout. In the second part, we'll work out the timeline and the function to go to a next slide. And in the last part, we'll reveal how to create the reverse animation from going to one slide to the previous. Okay, and at the end, we'll add little tilt effect where you could animate uh, the big hero image when you go from left to right of the screen. Okay, so that's what's coming up. Make yourself comfortable and enjoy. Alrighty, so to get started, we will go to the I Hate Tomatoes blog. The link to the article is under the video as well. And you can find Greensock tutorial, how to create a simple image slideshow, which is exactly what we'll be building in this screencast. Okay, if we click on the view demo, We'll see the exactly same demo which we'll be creating, which will which you will build at the end of this tutorial. Okay, so we'll follow step by step. We'll first create the HTML, then add CSS and then the interactivity using Greensock. And to start off, we will download the file. So click the download files button, which will download a zip file with the starting and ending files. So the ending files are there just for your reference. You will get, you will create the ending files basically just following with me step by step. Okay, so I click, I double click on the zip file to unzip it. And now if I go to the downloads folder, you'll see the unzipped Greensock image slideshow folder with end and starting files. Okay, so we'll copy the whole thing and I'm copying it into the folder Greensock Tutorials, which is sitting on my desktop. And I have also my map, my local host, my local environment. I've got it pointing to the same folder. Okay, so users, Tichas, that's my username, desktop and a Greensock Tutorials folder. So this means if I type in localhost, it loads this folder in a browser. Okay, so just to prove that that's really the case, if I open a new window and type in local host, you'll see the Greensock image slideshow folder, which has an end and start folder in it. Okay, so this is a starting point. And what we'll do now, we will go to the start folder and copy everything from there and paste it inside of the main folder. Okay, this means that now the index will be picked up and it should render a plain blank page. Okay, plain blank page with nothing on it. That's a good starting point. And if you ever need to restart the tutorial again, remove everything from here, copy again the starting files and then edit everything in there. Now we can open the sublime text text window, I'll make it full screen here. And we will drag this folder into sublime text. Okay, so I'm opening sublime text, dragging this folder. And we'll see the end start files and everything what we've just copied in inside of the folders inside of sublime text. And the three files we'll be working with the most is the index file. So let's open double click on the index.html. In the CSS folder, we'll be putting our CSS into the main.css and the JavaScript later on will be added to the main.js. Okay, so these three files are the ones we'll be working with. You can ignore the end and start folders for now, okay? So if we look at the index, there is some default HTML which you can ignore, but the main thing, the most important thing is we've got a normalize CSS, which just strips down all the default browser styling and resets everything for us. Then we've got one Google, uh, Google font loading, 
and then the main CSS. And at the bottom of the page, we've got a couple of JavaScript files loading. Okay, so by default, we're loading the jQuery plus three green sock files. One is the tween line, one is the timeline light, and one is the CSS plugin. So I'll explain a little bit later on why we're calling these three plugins. And then we've got the main JS loading. That's the file we'll be adding our own custom code to. Okay, the whole file, the whole HTML structure was downloaded from the initializer. So if you're wondering where this came from, I didn't write it from scratch, but I always use initializer, initializer, I think. Yeah, initializer, start an HTML5 boilerplate project in 15 seconds. So that's exactly how long it took me to, to set it up. Obviously I've got some custom code in it, but the overall structure, overall, HTML markup was downloaded from the initializer.com. So I recommend that for you as a starting point for your HTML5 project. It's very simple. You just click on any of these buttons, customize it, and then it downloads it for you. Okay, so that's how I came up with the structure. And this is where the HTML will go to. So our HTML will go here. That's the place will be pasting or writing our own HTML. It's inside of the body tag above the JavaScript files. Okay, so that's the HTML, the CSS. Again, it's HTML5 boilerplate CSS, so it has some reset styles at the top. And then our CSS will go here, exactly where the comment is. So we'll type in our CSS here. And as I said, in the JavaScript, it's the same thing. Our code will go here and that will start typing our JavaScript. Now we can create the HTML markup for our layout. So we'll have a main container and inside of the container we'll have a top and bottom halves and each half will have three slides. Okay, for the individual slides, we'll have top and bottom consisting three parts of it. Okay, so the HTML is in the HTML setup a structure for full screen image slideshow section. So you can copy and paste this HTML all the way from the start to the last closing diff and switch back to your code editor and replace the our HTML will go here, comment with the HTML. Okay, so I'll align everything. So we've got it nicely nested. So we've got a class diff class BCG hero inside of, sorry, we have a class BCG on a main container and inside of it hero class, which is then, which then contains the top and bottom containers. And each of the containers has a slide one, slide two, and slide three parts. Okay, the same thing for the bottom, slide one, slide two, and slide three. Okay, just to see how it looks in a browser, obviously we don't have anything styled, but if we refresh our GreenSock image slideshow page, you should see some HTML on the page. And I wanted to show you here what we've got at the moment. And if I just zoom in a little bit, so you can see it. So we've got a main container, div class a BCG. Inside of it, we have a hero image or hero class and slider navigation, which is the previous and next buttons. And then the hero consists of top and bottom parts. And top has a logo plus three divs for individual slides. Slide 01, slide 02, slide 03. And the bottom bit has a slide one, slide two, slide three as well. Okay, so that's the, that's the rough overview of the HTML. And now we can add the CSS. But before we look at the CSS, let's have a look at the visual indication of what we're trying to achieve, what sort of layout we're going for. Okay, so I've got a little screenshot here or a little uh, visual indication of how the CSS should be laid out. So the BCG is a full screen container. So position fix, top zero, left zero, right zero, bottom zero. So that makes it a full screen. Then inside of it is, is the hero, 
which is position absolute and width and height 100%, so makes it also full width. And then inside we have the top part, which has the top offset 30, right and left also 30, and the bottom is set to 50%. Okay, so that, that makes it stop halfway through. And the bottom one has also left, right and bottom 30 pixels, but the top offset is set to 50%. Okay, that pushes it down from the top to 50%. Okay, so that's how it's that's how it will be split up in two halves. And in the middle we'll have also a divider with a sort of gradient which makes the drop shadow on the bottom half. Okay, so this is a rough indication of what the CSS will be looking like. And you can find a screenshot under the HTML section. Okay, so now let's go to the CSS. We'll go to the second part of the tutorial and we'll copy and paste the CSS from here, starting from the logo all the way down to the slide navigation. And we'll copy and paste this inside of the main CSS. Okay, under the our CSS, we'll go here. We'll just paste everything in. Okay, what we've got here should be pretty straightforward. If you are not a complete beginner, you should be able to read this pretty nicely. We've got a logo, which is just the I Hate Tomatoes logo, positioned at the right place. We're using the position absolute. Then we've got the BCG, as we said before, it's position fixed, top left, right, and bottom zero, which makes it full screen. The H1 is positioned in the middle. And then we've got the hero, which is also full screen, and the, two, the first top container, which is position absolute, top left, right, 30, bottom 50%. And then we've got the background images set to the individual slides. Okay, so this is where the image for each of the slides is split in top and bottom halves. So if we look at the slide 01, you'll see that home slide in general is position absolute width and height 100%. And then slider one has a set background image of image underscore clouds top. And the bottom home slide one has a image underscore clouds bottom. Okay, so this image is half and half and together it creates the slide one image. The same we've got for slide zero two. We've got clouds top two and bottom two. And then we've got slide three with top three and bottom three. Okay, so we're overriding the individual slide background images. Then we have a divider which sits in the middle using position fixed and top 50%. And we've got some left and right minus 200 pixels, which just stretches it outside of the uh, parent container. Just make sure that there is no gaps on either sides. And we've got the gradient applied to this container. Okay, so it's a gradient starting from the bottom and going up. The bottom part has the same CSS as the top part, but the top is now 50% and left, right, bottom, offset 30 pixels. And then we've got some CSS just for the content of it, which is the paragraph and link. And finally, at the end, we've got a slide navigation, which are the two arrows sitting to the right. We've got it position fixed, right 50 pixels, top 50%. So it sits all the way to the right edge of the browser and some general styling for the unordered list and link. Okay, so this together, if we save it, we should see much better looking page in a browser. So if I refresh it now, you'll see that we've got the layout as we want it, but we'll see now slide three. Okay, so that's the last slide in our HTML and that's why it sits on top of the other two. Okay, so we need to tweak it a little bit. We'll need to add now the green sock JavaScript to make the first slide visible by default. But at the moment, just with the pure CSS, we've got all three slides sitting on top of each other. Now that we've got the HTML and CSS set up, we can go to Sublime Text and start writing the JavaScript and the green sock code to create the timelines to going to the next slide. 
Are you enjoying this series of GreenSock tutorials and do you want to learn more about GreenSock? Check out my GreenSock workshop where you can learn how to build three other interactive projects from start to finish. Visit greensocktutorials.com for more details.